Section 4.1, we talk about solving linear inequalities in one variable. So first of all, we need to do a little bit of review here. We should all be familiar with the inequality symbols in mathematics. We have our greater than symbol, our less than symbol, greater than or equal to symbol, and finally the less than or equal to symbol. And we can use these symbols to describe relationships between numbers. We can, for example, say that one number is greater than another number. We can also use them to describe sets of numbers. So, for example, consider the inequality here, x is less than 4. What we're describing here is all the numbers x that are less than 4. And so on this number line here, you can see here is the number 4, and all the numbers less than 4 would be all the numbers to the left of 4. So what we can do is we can shade that number line in to describe this particular set of numbers. So to do this, I'm going to shade the number line all the way up to the number 4. And then at 4, we need to put a symbol to indicate that 4 is not part of the solution. For the number 4 to be part of the solution, we would have to have equality here, and we don't. So in previous courses, you would often put an open circle there to indicate that the number 4 is not included as part of the answer. We're going to change that in this class, and we're going to use a parentheses instead. So that parentheses indicates that the number 4 is not part of the solution. Let's do number 2. So for number 2, we have all the numbers t that are greater than or equal to negative 6. So here is negative 6 on the number line. All the numbers that are greater than negative 6 would be all the numbers to the right of negative 6. And so if we graph this, we're going to shade all the numbers to the right, like so. And then at negative 6, notice this time, negative 6 is part of the solution because we have an equal to symbol. So to indicate that negative 6 is included, we use a square bracket. And the square means, the square bracket rather, means that it is included. And also notice that the parentheses or the bracket always opens toward the shading. All right, our next example, we want to graph all the numbers in that are less than 0. So we go to 0 on the number line. And the numbers in that are less than 0 would be the numbers to the left of 0. And 0, in this case, is not part of the solution, so we put a parentheses there. And for our last example, we're going to graph all the numbers x that are greater than 5. And so again, we locate 5 on the number line, and the numbers greater than 5 will be the numbers to the right of 5. And that should be a parentheses there to indicate that 5 is not part of the solution. Next concept I want to talk about is something called interval notation. Interval notation is another way to describe these sets of numbers. So we have three ways of describing these numbers. One is that we can use inequality notation which is what we have here when we say something like x is less than 4. We can also graph the solution, which is a good visual to see a particular set of numbers. And then interval notation is a way to describe the set of numbers without using a graph and also without using a variable. And when you describe sets of numbers in interval notation, you always want to start moving from the left to the right. So this particular set of numbers goes forever to the left. And so the left bound of this set of numbers 
is negative infinity, again, because it goes forever to the left. So this set of numbers would be all the numbers in between negative infinity and positive 4. And so the way we indicate that using this interval notation is like so. So this says we are looking at the set of numbers coming from negative infinity on the left side and stopping at positive 4 on the right side. And we are not including 4 as part of our answer. So how would we represent the next one using interval notation? So again, here we have a set of numbers. The left endpoint of those numbers is negative 6, and then it goes forever to the right. So using interval notation, I'll start by putting negative 6 here, and then it goes to infinity. And so the way we can indicate that is negative 6, and in this case, negative 6 is included, so we put a bracket, and it goes to infinity, which, of course, is positive infinity. And you can do it either way. You can put a positive infinity if you want, or you can simply write infinity. Another point to make about interval notation in regard to infinity and negative infinity, these will always have round parentheses. You can never have inclusion on infinity or negative infinity because you can't include something that you can't get to. So the next one, n is less than 0. In interval notation, that would be all the numbers from negative infinity up to 0. And 0 is not included. And for our last set of numbers, we have the numbers starting at 5 on the left and going to positive infinity on the right. And so we can write it like so. Let's take a look at a couple more. So for problem number 5, I would like to graph this inequality. This is called a double inequality. It's also sometimes called a continued inequality. We'll just call it a double inequality for now. That is what your textbook calls it. And what this is basically saying is that the number x has to satisfy both of these conditions. So x has to be a number that is less than 5, and it also has to be a number that is greater than or equal to negative 3. So if I'm going to graph this, here is negative 3 on the number line, here is positive 5 on the number line. For a number to be less than 5, but also greater than or equal to negative 3, it would have to be a number in between the two numbers. And then we're going to include negative 3 and not include positive 5. And when we write this in interval notation, we start on the left endpoint, which is negative 3, included, up to positive 5, not included. So this is sort of a special example. There is no infinity involved because it does not go forever to the right or to the left. Example 6 is truly a special example. This is an example where we are looking at all the numbers x that are in between infinity and negative infinity. And if you really stop and think about that for a minute, all numbers are between negative infinity and positive infinity. So what we're really describing here is, as I've written down, all real numbers. So this basically means every real number. And the way we write this in interval notation is, again, from left to right. Coming from the left, we are coming from negative infinity, and then we go forever to the right to positive infinity. And so in interval notation, it looks like this. And so the key takeaway here is that when describing all real numbers, you can write that out in words, 
You can write it out in inequality notation, and you can also write it out in interval notation. Okay, so next step, we're going to change the focus now. For these next examples, we want to solve the following linear inequalities and also write the answer in interval notation. Now, the good news here is that solving a linear inequality is exactly the same as solving a linear equation with one minor change, and we'll talk about that. So if you just look at this first inequality here, negative 3x plus 2 greater than or equal to 14, to solve this for x, we need to get x by itself. And so our first step is I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of the inequality. So just like equations, you can subtract the same number from both sides, and that doesn't affect anything. Now the next step here is we have to divide both sides by negative 3. Now this is a critical step. So to get x by itself, we have to divide by negative 3. 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. However, any time you divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality, the symbol. And that is the only difference between solving equations and inequalities. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the sign. So now to graph the answer, you don't have to make really elaborate graphs. Here is the number negative 4 on a number line. x is less than or equal to negative 4 would be all of these numbers. And to write that in interval notation, it would look like this. So there is our final answer there. Example two, very similar. To solve this particular linear inequality, we're going to go through the same steps that we do in solving linear equations. So my first step is I want to multiply this out. So using the distributive property, we could say this is 3x plus 2x minus 10, greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 26. In our next step, we will combine like terms. 3x plus 2x is 5x minus 10, greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 26. And now just like regular equations, I'm going to add 4x to both sides. Here, let me do that in a different color. So add 4x here, add 4x here, and when we do that, we get 9x minus 10 is greater than or equal to 26. And then we'll go ahead and add 10 to both sides. So hopefully as you're doing this, you feel pretty comfortable with all these steps. And our final step here to solve for x is simply divide both sides by 9. And let me point out the fact that we are dividing by positive 9. And so on the left side, the 9s cancel. On the right side, we get 4. And it stays greater than or equal to. It does not change because it only changes when you divide by a negative like we did over here. If you divide by a positive number, it stays pointing in the same direction. And so this is our answer. Now, to put that answer in interval notation, I highly recommend that you sketch a quick number line. And your number line, again, does not have to be very elaborate. Just put the number in question in the middle. And we want all the x's that are greater than 4, which is to the right of 4, or equal to 4. And so in interval notation, this will be numbers starting at 4 and going to infinity. Okay, so once again, 
we have another inequality to solve. And this is uh, just to remind you of some of the basic uh, steps for solving equations. And one step that we learned a little while back is that when you have an equation that has especially multiple fractions, it's best to multiply both sides by the common denominator. And the same is true when you have an inequality. So the least common denominator between 9 and 3 is actually 9. And so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the left-hand side by 9 and the right-hand side by 9. And what that means is that we're going to multiply each one of these four terms by 9. So let me write that down and show you what that looks like. So I've taken each one of these four terms and I've multiplied them by 9. So that's the same as multiplying both sides of the equation by 9. What this allows us to do is cancel common factors. Here, 3 goes into 9 three times. And on the other side, there's nothing to cancel. So now we're going to take this really slow. So in our first term here, the 9's canceled out. So we have 5 times the quantity, x plus 3, minus. Next, we have 3 times 4 which is 12 times the quantity x minus 3, greater than or equal to 9 times x is 9x, minus 9 times 1 is 9. And so now we'll go through our regular steps in solving equations and inequalities. We'll distribute. Right-hand side stays the same. Next, we will combine like terms. 5x minus 12x is negative 7x. And positive 15 and positive 36 is positive 51. Notice that on the right-hand side, there is nothing to combine. There are no like terms. And then next, I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. So here's a pro tip when solving these problems. Always get your variable on the left-hand side. It's a little bit easier. So here's what we have now. And then we're going to subtract 51 from both sides, which gives us negative 16x is greater than or equal to negative 60. And then here's the critical step. We're going to divide both sides by negative 16. And that cancels the negative 16 on the left-hand side. And then you have to remember to change the inequality symbol. You have to reverse it. And then you have to reduce the fraction here. Negative 60 divided by 16. If you cancel a common factor of 4, and if you cancel the negative signs here, you should end up getting 15 over 4. And this is our solution. And then to put that in interval notation, you don't have to have a graph, but I feel like a graph really does help. And the great thing about the graph, because sometimes students really fret about fractions when they have to graph, we really only need to graph that single number, 15 over 4. So you don't have to put any other numbers on your number line. We just want to know, where are we shading? Well, if x is less than this number, then we are shading to the left of that number. And it is also including. And so now in interval notation, we're going to write this answer as all the numbers starting at negative infinity on the left and going all the way up to 15 fourths on the right, not including the negative infinity, and including the 15 force. Okay, let's move on. Section 4.2 looks at solving compound inequalities. And a compound inequality is a couple of inequalities that are joined together by using the word and or by using the word or. 
So we'll start with an example of a compound inequality using the word and. For a number x to be a solution to a compound inequality using the word and, the number x has to satisfy each of the inequalities. So we know that if x is greater than or equal to negative 5, that would be all numbers to the right of negative 5. And if x is less than or equal to positive 4, that would be all the numbers to the left of positive 4. So we only want the answers that satisfy both of these. And so that's the key. Both must be true. That's when you're using the word and. So to do this, I'm going to do what I like to call air graphing. So I'm going to graph above the number line. X is greater than or equal to negative 5 would be a graph going in this direction. And X is less than or equal to positive 4 is a graph going in this direction. And so if both of these must be true, then we are looking at where the two graphs overlap each other. And so it would be all the numbers in between negative 5 and positive 4. And so on our number line here, we're going to graph these numbers in between. And so our final answer in interval notation, of course, would be all the numbers starting at negative 5 going up to positive 4. So this is how we do compound inequalities involving the word and. You're looking for the overlap of the two graphs, what the graphs have in common. It's also sometimes called the intersection of the two graphs. So all of these words sort of mean the same thing in this particular context. Let's look at example two. In example two, we have a compound inequality, but it uses the word or. Or is less restrictive. For a compound inequality using the word or, only one or the other needs to be true for a number x to satisfy this compound inequality. So only one or the other needs to be true. That's what it means when we use the word or. So let's think about all the numbers x that are less than or equal to negative 3. And there's no need to air graph here. So I'm just going to graph right on the number line. X is less than or equal to negative 3 would be all of these numbers. Or X is greater than 2. X is greater than 2 would be all of these numbers. Now, there is no overlap, but that's okay. Both of these sets of numbers are part of the solution because we have the word or. So our final answer here, we're just going to write it in interval notation. And notice that we have two separate sets of numbers. So this first set of numbers can be described as all the numbers coming from negative infinity going up to negative 3, including negative 3. And this other set of numbers is all the numbers starting at 2, but not including, going up to positive infinity. And then we need to say that the answer is either this set of numbers or this set of numbers. So we need to join these sets together. And to do that, we use the union symbol. And so this symbol here is called the union symbol. And it is essentially a capital U without a tail. So let me draw that again. When you draw a union symbol, you just make a capital U but no tail. Okay, let's try some other problems. So here we have a couple of additional examples 
of solving and graphing. And they use the conjunction words or here and and here. Now to solve these, it seems that we have to do a little bit of work first. Notice that we don't know what x needs to be here. We have to figure that out. And we have to do the same thing here. So in other words, we have to solve these inequalities independently. So to do that, for the first one, I'll just add 4 to both sides. And this gives us 2x is greater than or equal to 14. Divide by 2, we get x is greater than or equal to 7. And then to solve the other one, we subtract 5 from both sides, which gives us 1 third x is less than or equal to negative 7. And then we multiply both sides by 3, and that gives us x is less than or equal to negative 21. And so the solution is all the numbers that are either greater than or equal to 7 or less than or equal to negative 21. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this on our number line because when you're first learning interval notation, a number line really helps in terms of graphing and getting the interval notation out of that. So there's only two numbers that matter here. We have negative 21 on the left and positive 7 on the right. And the first inequality says x needs to be greater than or equal to positive 7, which would be here. And the second one says that x has to be less than or equal to negative 21, which is here. And so then in interval notation, the entire set of numbers, and again, you want to, explain, you want to describe this coming from left to right. So we're coming from negative infinity up to negative 21, including, or, which means union, we're going from positive 7 up to infinity. And so our next example is very similar, except that we do have the word and. Now, the fact that we have the word and doesn't really affect anything that we do in the beginning. We still have to solve each one of these. So for the first one here, I'm going to add 2 to both sides, which gives us x is less than or equal to negative 6. And then for the other one, I need to add 3, which gives us 2x is greater than 9. And then we have to divide by 2, which gives us x is greater than 9 halves. Now, to get that solution into interval notation... I'm going to do a number line with negative 6 and 9 halves. And when, I, when I'm trying to graph a compound inequality involving the word and, I like to error graph because the final solution on the number line is going to be the overlap of the two graphs. In other words, what the two graphs have in common. So x is less than or equal to negative 6 is this set of numbers x is greater than 9 halves is this set of numbers. Notice that there is no overlap. In other words, there are no numbers that satisfy both of these conditions at the same time. So it is impossible for a number to satisfy both at the same time, but to be a solution to a compound inequality that uses the word and, the number must be a solution to both at the same time. So since there are no such numbers, the answer here is there is no solution. So you don't always get no solution. Remember, in our last page here, we had the word and here, and we did get a solution, but that's because the two graphs overlapped each other. They had some numbers in common. But if you don't have any numbers in common and you have the word and, then there's no solution. Let's look at one more. 
or two more. Okay, how do you solve a double linear inequality? So we had mentioned earlier what, what a double inequality was. This is an example of a double inequality. You have two inequality symbols here. And this says the expression 4x minus 9 must be less than or equal to 7, but it also must be greater than or equal to negative 3. So the way we solve this is we're just going to add 9 here because we're trying to get x by itself. But if I add 9 there, I also have to add 9 to the right side, and I have to add 9 to the left side. So you just add 9 to each of the three parts, and when we do that, negative 3 plus 9 is 6. In the middle, we get 4x, and 7 plus 9 is 16. And then to get x all the way by itself, we just need to divide by 4 now. 6 divided by 4 is the same as 3 halves. 4x divided by 4 is just x. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now, how do we write our solution? Well, you can write it as a linear double inequality like this, but you can also put this in interval notation. And so 3 halves is the same as 1 and a half, so that would be to the left of 4. And we want all the numbers x that are less than or equal to 4, but also greater than or equal to 3 halves. So this perfectly describes all the numbers in between the two, and including on both. And so in interval notation, it is this set of numbers. So for our final example, it actually works very much the same as our last problem. We want to solve for x here in the middle. So to get x by itself, we're first going to get rid of this 2 here. And we're going to do that by multiplying all three parts by 2. And so 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4. Here the 2's cancel, and so we end up with 5 minus 3x. And 2 times 2 here is positive 4. So next up, I'm going to subtract 5 to cancel the 5 here. And this leaves us with negative 9, less than, negative 3x, less than or equal to, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And then for our final step, and this is an important one, we have to divide by negative 3 to all three parts. Well, negative 9 divided by negative 3 is 3. Here, those cancel out, and we just get x. And here, the negatives cancel out, and we get one-third. Now, why did I not put the inequality symbols? Because they have to be reversed, right? Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to reverse both inequalities there in this case. Now, that looks a little funny. 3 is greater than x is greater than or equal to 1 third. That's a little bit strange. So when you divide by a negative, you will often get your inequality a little bit backwards here in terms of how these numbers should be ordered on the number line. So we can fix that by simply flipping everything around. So x is in the middle. We're going to put 3 on the right side, and we're going to put 1 third on the left side. And then we just have to make sure that the inequalities are consistent with what they used to be. So here we had 3 is greater than x, and here we still have 3 is greater than x, and x is greater than or equal to 1 third, x is greater than or equal to 1 third. So this is the appropriate way to express our answer in inequality notation. 
And then putting it on a number line now is relatively simple. There are the two numbers in question. We want all of the x's in between these two numbers, not including 3, but including 1 third. And in interval notation, it looks like this. All right, time to get some practice.